okay? So automatic, automatically the connection begins, okay? So the, so, so, so the other process program then proceeds to approve all the client. So what I mean by when I proceed to, uh, to, uh, to uh, approve all the client means is once the person has the right authorization to make, to, to make the RFC connection and the system you are calling is available and it has checked that yes, I'm available, okay? Automatically, the RFC connection takes place. And not just take place, if the system you are connected to and the user you are trying to connect to is not on that system. It's going to be a fake connection. So, so, so most time when we are trying to do RFC, we need to be sure that we have the username or the password of someone else in that particular other system we are trying to communicate with. It might be your, I, I didn't mean you have user in Q92 and you have another user in Q90. Okay, it will be easy for you to communicate with both systems. Okay, so you can you can you can do an RFC connection from P92 to Q90 when you have the user in Q P92 and as though well you have the same user in Q90. It's, it's not necessary, it's going to be your own personal user. It may be someone else's someone, someone else account. But once you have the person's username and the password, you can automatically make a connection to that particular system. So that's, that, that's how RFC works. Okay, so now I'll be talking about, please, just a minute. We have secure communication, we have uh, impersonation and tr uh, trust uh, relationships, we have authorizations and segregation of duties, and we have uh, auditing and uh, logging. Okay, so now talking about uh, the first one is authentication and authorization. So, uh, what's authentication and authorization in RF connection? Authentication and authorization are essential aspects of securing uh, RFC connection in the SCP landscape. Okay, and as well, they help ensure that only authorized users and, uh, and systems can initiate and execute RFC calls while maintaining the, confi uh, the, the, the confidentiality, the integrity of data exchange between systems. Okay, so what, I'm, uh, what I mean by this is, if you are trying to do RFC between two systems, first thing is you need to have the right authorization to make this happen. And as well, you need to be sure that you have the right, the right user in the other system you're communicating with. I, I, I already said this, and as well, you need to know the username and password. So without you having this, uh, all, all those things I've made mentioned, you can't, you can first thing is you won't be able to carry out any RFC connection. If you didn't have the right authorization to carry out RFC, you won't be able to even check into the system or trying to, try, try, trying to move yourself from logging in straight to the RFC uh, interface. You won't be able to do that, okay? Now, and again, we have a concept of authorization and authentication in RFC. Okay, the first one is let's talk about the authentication. Okay, uh, authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user or system attempting to establish an RFC connection. What I mean by this is, once you want to do any uh, start the uh, RFC in your uh, connection, the first thing is you need to be sure you have the right uh, the, the right uh, authorization. By logging in, once you log in, once you log in, you go to the, uh, you, you, move, you move straight to the command, uh, command box, you put the, the right C code. So at that moment, you will know if you have the, uh, the, the, the authorization to perform the transaction or not. Okay? So, and it ensures that the entity initiating the IFT call is indeed whom they claim to be. So that's why your identity is very, very important. Okay, so if you're using someone else, log username and, and, and password, and you are trying to uh, initiate RS connection, and the person you are trying to use is, is his username is not having the right authorization, automatically, uh, so once you try to, to, uh, to log in or you try to perform the transaction, you'll be denied. And while you'll be denied, the system will automatic record of what you are doing at that moment. Okay, so, and there are various, and there, there, there are various uh, authentication mechanisms that can be used for RFC connection. Okay, like I said, the username and password authentication, whereby you, you, uh, you impute your username and password to log into the system and as well to before now try to check in to the R R RFC platform. Okay, and now let's talk about the authorization. The authorization ensures that authenticated user or um, system have necessary permission to access specific R uh, RFC enable function or perform certain actions. Okay, and again, it this prevents unauthorized user from executing function they shouldn't have access to. So authorization is often, man uh, uh, often managed through roles and profile. Okay, sometimes when we are trying to create a user, 
once you create a user, you still have to create roles to make that user function in that particular system. So after you've created a user and you are trying to create a function and you want that person to have authorization to perform an heresy. So that means you need to assign the transaction code and, 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 and you need to assign the transaction code to that particular role you are creating to enable the user you are creating to be able to perform RFC connection to, uh, uh, initiation. So once you create, once the user is created and the, person, and the user is not, have, is not having the right code to, mix, uh, to, to perform the uh, IRFC connection, definitely there's no way you can go about it. So the right authorization needs to be, to, uh, needs to be allocated. And as well, the authentication, the, the, the authentication needs to be verified. You need to make sure that the person that is trying to pass, 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 perform that particular transaction is the person that, 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 that deserves that particular code to perform that particular transaction. So, and um so 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 the, like i said the authorization that's needed is the roles you had uh, the, you have it right in code and as well the profile as well you generate the profile once the role is being created okay so authentication and authorization in rfc connection are crucial for ensuring that only authorized entities access and execute remote function within the system landscape so what i mean by this is once once you have the right uh, authorization and as well you have the right uh, uh, authentication to do this, okay, definitely you can you, you you can proceed, okay. And if you're not having this particular authorization and you are not having the the, the authentication to do that, you first thing, you you even have access to log into the SCP system and as well, if even though you, you manage to log in, there's no way you can carry out the the RS connection because you don't have the right transaction code to do that, okay. And again, proper implementation of these security measures helps protect sensitive data. So if you are giving, if you are giving uh, a user the R, the the, the RFC code, definitely that means the person is the staff, the, 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 the transaction code. Maybe it's either maybe it's maybe maybe either it's either uh, a basis administrator or a system is SAP system administrator. Okay, some 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 basis uh, user can can have this RFC connection uh, 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 authorization, and as well as a system administrator, definitely you are meant to have all the authorization. That, that works perfectly in the SP system. And we have over a 10,000 transaction code in SP system. So, so, so as, as, as an admin, you are meant to have all these transactions to function well and as well to do the right thing at the right time on the system. Okay, so it's, it helps to present to, uh, to protect sensitive data, prevent unauthorized uh, actions, and as well maintain the overall security posture, uh, posture of the SAP system. So, and, uh, as a system admin, you are meant to have all the all, all the T codes that all, all, all the T codes that essential code that work perfectly in the system, and as well, you are meant to uh, you, 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 you are meant to to, to to oversee all the activities going on in the system. There's a way to do about that. Okay, so we have different transaction code to carry out different activities in the system. When it comes as a system admin, you should have all the all, all the right transaction code to check the system from the from, from the from system logs to other authorization checks, all those things have as a system admin, you are meant to have the right transaction. Okay. So again, we're talking uh, we, uh, we'll talk about secure communication. Okay, so secure communication, um, Secure communication in RFC connection refers to uh, the practice of ensuring that the data exchange between systems during RFC connection remains confidential and protected from unauthorized access. So what I mean by this is, if you are meant, if you are meant to, to, if you are meant to carry out uh, an RFC in the system, the first thing is you need to be sure that you, uh, uh, the practice, what you are trying to do, the exchange data between the two systems are secured. If you are moving, if you are trying to move a data. From uh, Q90 to P92, or trying to move an uh, information from P92 to Q, uh, from P92 to Q90. Okay, the the, uh, the the link or the essence of data needs to be secured. Okay, so that's where we comes in with encryption. We comes with uh, message integrity. We comes in with uh, commission uh, com uh, configuring uh, uh, RFC parameters and, and and so on and so forth. Okay, so those things are are, are are part of the secure communication. You can initiate. When it comes to you having access or carry out an FC uh, RFC connection, okay, and again, secure, uh, secure communication is vital to prevent to prevent sensitive information from being intercepted, manipulated, or compromised by malicious actors. Okay, what I mean by this is, uh, mo mo most most times, mo most most times we we we, ha we have hackers that they are always available twenty four seven. If if what you are trying to do is not secure, there's no they can tap in from nowhere. They can tap in from anywhere in the world. 
So for all this for, for all these things not, not to happen, you need to make sure you have a secure communication between the two systems. And if you're having more than two systems, you still need to have the same secure communication to put to, uh, to protect some information and data from, 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 from being hijacked from, 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 from someone that doesn't have that, 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 that don't deserve to have access to what you are doing. Okay. And again, talking about the components that involve in secure communication, like I said, we have the encryption. Okay. We have the encryption whereby your username, your, your password. Can only be, you, you can only know your password, and even though you are typing the password, no one else can see it. They might see something else, but because because the password is being encrypted, you yourself you are you 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 are you are, the, you are the one that know what you are typing, and you need to be careful with what you are typing because it's encrypted. You may make a mistake, and the system will reject it. So you have to be sure with the password you are you are you are, you are trying to log in with into the system. Okay, and we have a message integrity. Secure communication uh ensures that the data being transmitted is not altered or tampered with. Sometimes you may, you may be trying to transfer uh, uh, um, a data from one system to the other, but in the process of doing that, it might, it might, it's, 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 or maybe, maybe, maybe someone else might have tampered with that information. So the process of moving it, it might not complete that transaction because what you are sending is not complete. Okay, and so far it's not complete, definitely there's no way the transaction can be completed. And even though the transaction is completed, you won't get the full information of what you are moving from system one to system two. So that's why you need to be sure so that's where that, that's where message integrity uh, comes in, and we uh we, we call we call something uh, message digest. We call it message digest, or we call it ashes when it comes to mess uh, message integrity. So this is used to verify the receipt data that has been modified. So if in the process of sending that particular, in the process of sending that particular file, if if the data has been tampered, tampered with, with that ashes, you'll be able to know, you you you'll be able to know if this message. As maybe, maybe the data has been tampered with. So the, process, the process of trying to transfer, there are going to be some verification done by the other system to be sure this, the, the data you are sending to me is it complete or is not? Is it perfect or is there an error or is there something wrong with what you are doing? So during the process of verifying it, and the other system, I, I, I notice that what you are what, what you are trying to send to into to 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 its to its 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 own base is not secured definitely, or it has been compromised definitely. It's going to cancel the transaction. So that's what we mean by uh, uh but, but that's what we mean by message digest, or we call it ashes. Okay. And again, we can, uh, we, we, we 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 have um configuring uh, RFC security parameter whereby there are some parameters that need to be configured during uh, during, during, during RFC procedure. So if those con configuration is not well done, it's going to uh, it's going to be talked back to you through an error message. Definitely, you get an error message during the procedure. So that means the configuration is either not complete. Or the person trying to do that configuration is a novice system. He's just trying to manipulate, just trying to produce his own personal initiative. So if you're trying to carry out an RS connection, the configuration needs to be perfect. So if you're having the wrong configuration, definitely you're going to get the wrong answer. The system is not going to accept the communication between the two systems. So in so in SM system, administrator can can, can configure various can configure various systems, security parameters for RFC connection, including specifying encryption settings, trusted CAS, and the uh, security mechanism. Okay, so as a system admin, in the process of you carrying out as, uh, an RFC, okay, there are a lot of things you need to put into consideration. The first thing is the encryption setting. Because while you are trying to do the RFC, definitely there's going to be an interface whereby you need to, you need to put your password. Apart from apart, apart from making the the, the, the client visible, or are, that means the clients you are trying to connect to in that system. Apart from making that one uh, visible or the username visible, the password still needs to be protected. Okay, so through the through through, through, through encryption, the password definitely will be encrypted. It's part of the uh, RFC connection uh parameters that while you are trying to carry out the RFC connection between the two systems, definitely the password is not going to be visible. It's going to be encrypted. So only the administrator or the person trying to initiate the RFC will understand and will know exactly what he or she is imputing to carry out the sort of transaction. Okay. Then we have uh, we have impersonation and trust relationships. Okay. So now let's talk about impersonation and trust. So trust, uh, impersonation and trust uh, relationships are important concepts. Uh, in in context of RF connection, okay, especially when it comes to sharing connection between two systems, okay, and we know and we know what impersonation means, okay. So now let's talk about impersonation first. <coughs> Excuse me. So impersonation uh, refers to the act of uh, one entity, maybe a user or a system, pretending to be another entity with higher privileges or authority. So what I'm trying to say here is 
when you are trying to impersonate someone, that means you are trying to act like the, per the, 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 the person, or maybe you are trying to act like another user. So because you have access to the username and password, does not mean you own that particular username. Okay, you might you, you, you might have you might have maybe maybe be true a dubious a dubious means get access or have access to that person's username and password. So once you have the username uh, username and password and you are trying to log in or you are trying to carry out any transaction, maybe during RF's connection, definitely what you are doing is you are asking, you are, you are impersonating such person. So then you are trying to impersonate such person, and which is which 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 is not part of uh, the parameters when it comes to uh, carrying out an RFC connection. Okay, and again, in the context of RFC connection, impersonation will occur if a malicious user or a system or, or if a, a malicious user or a malicious system gains an authorized access to execute RFC enable function by impersonating a legitimate user or or, or, or system. So I've said it all. If I, I did, for example, for example, I'm uh. We have like like RSL, we have uh, P92, and we have the Q90. Okay, maybe the, maybe the, the admin has given a certain user uh uh, uh the, 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 the right the right uh, 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 authorization to carry out an RFC. So due to maybe carelessness or maybe due to, maybe due to spam or something else, the other uh, someone is someone strange the system now have access to that person's username and password into the system. Okay, so 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 once the person is whatever the person is trying to do or carry or, the, or whatever the, the kind of uh activity person is trying to carry out in that system is automatically impersonating. So it's trying to impersonate the username and password he hijacked, even without knowing the idea or having uh having knowledge of what he or he or she is going to carry out in the system. The moment is able to hijack the username and password or is trying to hijack the other the, the opposing system, sometimes it happens. Okay, you the the, the, the the first system might, might be secured and the other system might be hijacked. So whatever you are moving from the first system to the other system may be hijacked, and the person who uh the person the person taking charge over the other hijacked system might gain access to what you are doing and use the same opportunity to log in back to the other system. So that that place of carrying out such uh, such previous act is impersonation. Okay. And and again, impersonation can lead to uh security breaches. And authorized actions, for instance, uh, an attacker might use a compromised user account to execute RFC call with elevated privileges. I just said it, okay? So, so they might just, I might just hijack, might just hijack all this. They might hijack, uh, hijack the user and password. They might hijack data from the other other hand, trying to use the opportunity to log in back to the other system. And once, 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 once the other the 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 the, 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 the unauthorized user have access to the wrong authorization from that system. It can damage the it can die the, 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 the SAP, SAP system. So as an admin, you need to be extremely careful with who you give access, uh, with, with who you give access to the system, with who you give your uh, uh, authorization. It, it, it doesn't mean it should be RFC authorization alone or authorizations. You need to be careful before before allocating or assigning any authorization to an unknown user. And sometimes and, some, and sometimes the, the, the user might the the, the, the unauthorized user might have knowledge of how to create a user. So it might create it might create a user in the system and and with, the, with, with a different name, maybe with the admin name. So the admin needs to also be careful to still check properly the kind of user, this kind of users that have been created in the client to know, okay, I created this particular name, I assigned this authorization, I did this, I did that. So that's the part of so to prevent impersonation is very, very important. So very important, and you need to implement strong authentication mechanism. And access, so while implementing a strong strong mechanism, you need to also have access control and proper authorization check. I said before this, so you need to have proper authorization check. So this ensures that only authorized user and system can initiate RFC call, and their actions are restricted according to their uh, assigned rule and privileges. So the moment, so 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 so, what, so the moment you create a user, you after creating a user. You are trying to create a role, or you are, or maybe you are trying to assign a created roles. So even while you are trying to create uh, assign a created roles, you still need to there still be, there, there need to be there, there, there need to there, there still need to be a limit to what a user a new user maybe new or old there still be, there still need to be a limit to what he or she can do in the system. So if the person if the person is as close to a server by he needs to perform or carry out an RSC connection, definitely you are entitled. So so the admin automatically needs to assign the T code. To the uh, to the roles that the, uh, the, the user can use in initiating or carry out an ROC uh, connection. Okay, so now let's talk about let's talk about uh, authorized. Let's talk about okay, fine. Okay, I'm done with impersonation. Let's talk about trust relationships. Okay, 
So trust relationships are established to enable communication and data exchange between different systems or components in the network. Okay. And again, so uh, trust relationships ensure that the communication system recognize and trust each other identities and credentials. So that's why I said, while you're trying to log into other systems, you need to know the username and password, the username and password of the system you're connecting to. You need to be sure that the username and, and password you are, you are connecting to the other side is, uh, is available and, is, and it exists in another system. So if you're trying to connect from your own system to the second system and the username and password does not exist in that client you are connecting to, definitely it's going to, give, it's going to leave an error message for you. Okay, so for so for for, for such for, for you to be able to carry out uh the IoT connection successfully, definitely there needs to be a true uh, a trust relation between your system and the other system. And as well, there are some things that need to be available in that other trust system for you to be able to carry out the IoT connection. So I think you are having uh you're having you're having clients client 900 in the system one, and you're having clients 600 in the other system. Okay, so you are trying to you are trying to do I have connection from client 900 in the first system to client uh, 600 in other system. Okay, the username and password is different. Okay, I mean you have the the, uh, the the access to that system and the client. You want to do RFC to the username you think uh, that that you think that you believe is available in that client is no longer there. Definitely, once the connection there. Is definitely, you are going to get an error message as a feedback automatically. Okay, so you need to have the right username. You need to have the right client, the right username and password. You need to have the right user identity in that particular system you are trying to connect to them. And as in, the system you are connecting to, you still need to have a, an existing user in that other system for easy communication and for, for trust relationship between two With the name, with, with the name, yes. so that's why I said. So I are so so because there's a trust relation between the two user and they both exist in both system. Definitely, the hierarchy connection can take place effectively. So once so so once you activate your test connection, you are going to get a go ahead signal from the system. So that means the relation between two system is 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 created and both systems are available and as well the username. So the, the, the user identity exists in both systems. Okay, so again, uh, trust relationships are crucial for establishing secure communication channels. And then they, uh, they often involve the use of digital certificates uh, the, the, and uh, other authentication methods. When two systems have a trust uh, relationship, it means they have agreed to communicate with each other based on mutual trust and authentication. Okay, I hope you understand that. So now let's talk about uh, authorization and uh, segregation of duties. Um, authorization and segregation of duties, they help uh, ensure uh, that users uh, uh, users have uh, the, the appropriate permission and responsibility in, uh, in the system landscape. Okay, that's what authorization stands for. Okay, and again, they minimize the risk of unauthorized access and potential misuse of function. So that's why I said, if you are going to give such authorization to a user, First thing, you need to be sure that the user you created and the person you are assigning such huge authorization to need to be the, the right person that is served such authorization at that particular point. You don't just give a RF connection or a T code to just uh, a new user. It's going to be misused. And again, the person you are given this access needs to be a trusted person. So as system, a system admin, there should be a way you go about doing your thing. There should be a way you go about assigning uh, authorization to user, okay? The difference between when, you, when, when, when they, they, they do, there's, there's, there, there, are, there are some existing rules in the system. So maybe existing rule like for creating user, for creating rules, um, for, for assigning role, maybe you want to carry out SU01, maybe you want to carry out SU010, there are transactions to make that possible. But there are some transactions that you need to be very, very careful when it comes to assigning it to a user. Okay, so as, 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 as a system admin, you need to be very, very careful security wise when it comes to assigning transactional codes to users. Okay, so and, and, and again, uh, segregation, segregation, of, segregation of duties. Uh, uh, how can I? Okay, okay, aims to ensure that no single user or entity has uh, access to multiple functions 
or processes that could potentially lead to unauthorized actions or other man manipulation. So that's why we come about assigning uh, a client to a user. So it's like I said, it's possible you can have more than a thousand users in a client. But because of some situation like the RS connection situation, you need to have a user to a client. Okay, so for example, you are assigning, you are trying to uh, connect with system, system with a client in other system, and the client is the one zero two, and, and you are have and you are having another user in that particular client. So maybe by the way, the the, uh, the, the user you are connecting to is not is, is not is, is maybe it's not available. It, the person is yet to log into the system, but the other the other user in that client has logged in to that particular client and it's working. Though, though the, the IS connection might be pending, but just imagine a process whereby, whereby it's something you it's something you need to do urgently. Maybe you have maybe you have a lot of uh and a lot of users that need that 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 need that need the authorization. Maybe, maybe or maybe you are the one trying to carry out those uh, this transaction for them. Maybe you are trying to do it on their behalf. Maybe they're trying to do some, maybe like they're trying to carry out access, maybe access control, uh, access control uh stuff, and you need to be the one to connect, connect your system. Connect your system with other system. So because someone else is logging, has logged into that system and it's working, definitely the transaction might not be successful. So that's why it's best as as it's for, for best practices, or you need to have a user to a particular client. And again, and again, when considering RX connection, organizations need to implement strong authorization practices and stick to uh the, the segregation of GT principle to ensure that RSC enable functions are executed only by authorized user. Maybe authorized system, and that potential risk associated with unauthorized assets are minimized. So once the right once the right once the right transaction is given to the right user, definitely you've minimized you've minimized and you're able to regulate uh, uh, assets getting to the wrong hand. And if you're if you're if you're if you're communicating from the right system, uh, from a secure system to another secure system, definitely the the, the rule of the, the rules of SOD is still applied to systems and as well is applied to users. Okay. So now let's talk about the uh the auditing and the login. So auditing and login uh in RFC uh connection are uh, very very important. Okay, so based on uh, SAP security, so the apps organization monitor and track events uh, sorry activities related to RFC connection. Okay, so through the audit and login, okay, you'll be able to monitor a lot of uh, uh issues that have been carried out. Like uh, for, for example, maybe someone is trying to um okay, maybe someone is trying to uh try to initiate or trying to try to initiate the transaction the, the transaction code the transaction code for RFC and the and the, and the user and the user is not having the right authorization to do so the moment the person try uh, try, try trying to, to carry out the transaction the system is going to snap it it record it so system record it, it uh, no, no matter how how many times you try if you try it in the other time the system is going to record it that someone else is trying to try uh, trying to perform a transaction that does that he or she does not have the authorization to carry out such transaction so that's where the auditing comes in okay and auditing and login also provide visibility into uh, uh who initiated RFC calls or what functions were executed and the outcome of such actions okay maybe 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 the right user is trying to uh, carry out the RFC connection, is having the right authorization. Okay, so it has gotten to uh, a state whereby he, the user needs to configure the system. Okay, and, and maybe the purpose of carrying out such transaction, maybe an error occur, maybe uh, some things were omitted. Maybe maybe where you are meant to put uh where where you are meant to put the host name you're putting the gateway where you meant to put the instance you you, you you input the wrong instance the moment you get an error message the system automatically snapped it so once you snap it it has recorded that it has been recorded in your own user profile that yes when you are trying to carry out uh this particular transaction you were denied so during the do, do, during the during the auditing the auditor will definitely see all those things then they might call you for questioning. Okay, why we're trying to carry out this thing? What happened? Then because 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 you know because you know you are not trying to uh, log in through a DBS means yes I was trying to log in because because I have that authorization and again in case of carrying out I made a mistakes so I now have to correct myself. Then fine you're out. Okay, so so and and again when when an editor comes in before you have been questioned even they they will check 
your buffer to know if you even have the right authorization to carry out all these things you'll be doing. So if just I just, imagine, 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 imagine the, uh, the, the, the wrong user, the wrong user hijack your username and password in, 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 in an organization, and now use your username, username and password to carry out a dubious, uh, dubious, a, 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 a dubious process in the system. Definitely, you'll be fascinated. The person has been implicated. So I, 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 you know, I know so, some organizations have the rules that once you're implicated, there's no going back. Is that you leave? Is that you leave? Is that you have been sacked or you go to jail? So that's just it. So that's the part of uh, auditing when it comes to uh, RFC uh, connection. And again, uh, talking about the audit, that's what we talk about the user activity. Uh, that's what we talk about the user activity. We talk about the authorization checks uh, to know if the user has the right authorization uh, to execute the rest requested RFC function. We have failed attempts. Have we Say that okay. So the third attempt, you call it maybe your favorite RFC, whereby maybe you want to log into the system, you are denied. Maybe after logging in, you're not having access to your authorization, and you still want to perform such authorization, you will be denied, it's recorded, or you log in, you log in, and you don't have an idea of what you are doing. When you are meant to click create, you click something else, the system, the, the, the same, the same gave back to you with an error, everything is going to be recorded. So that's why that's so the other thing is that it's still part of the failed attempts. And now let's talk, let's talk about login. Log the login, okay. So login system, we are talking about uh system logs. We all know what system logs is. So system logs uh specifically focus on security related events such as that maybe uh so system logs uh, uh system capture system level event including RFC related issues. And it's not only about system. It's, it's not it's not only about RM, uh, RFC related issues. You 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 might you might log in. All your activities you doing in the system will be recorded. The time you log in. The time you carry out the transaction, moving from one, uh, moving from one interface to the other, all this thing is going to be recorded in the system log. So it's easy for the system admin to trace what you are doing, even without the system trace. So with the system log, you're able to check all those things. So and also an auditor can comes in and through the system log, he can check exactly what you're doing. So while auditing, the auditor will go through the system log. The auditor, the auditor will go through the security logs. Um, it's going to go through uh audit trails. Yes. So all those processes are still part of the, uh, the relevancy of RSC in SAP security. Okay, so RSC will lead to one thing, and as well, it's still going to uh, it's going to tell you, okay, fine, I'm trying to do a connection test, but there's there's a lot of procedure that is going to go uh, that that follows the connection you are trying to do. So that's how huge SAP security is. So now I'm talking about the audit logs, uh, little records that show the sequence of events, particular RFC call, including who initiated it, all these things that are part of our uh, audit uh, trails. So uh, I'm done with this, so I'll, I'll move straight to the system. Um, Mr. Shana, please, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, all right, thank you, sir. Okay, so now uh, I'll, I'll move to the system whereby I can show you how uh, RFC connection is being carried out as a system admin or uh, a security admin as well. Please, can you see my screen? Please, if you can see my screen, please let me know. Yes, come on, your, your screen can be seen. All right, thank you. Okay, so uh, logging into, log into the system, you all know how to log in. Okay, so now I'm trying to do uh, RFC connection from P90 to Q90. So I will log in. Through the P ninety two. Okay. So I'm logging in uh in the system. 
I'm playing 400. So the t the t terminal code for carrying out a uh, RFC is SM twenty nine, SM fifty nine. Okay, so because because I have uh, the authorization to carry out such transaction, so right here here I am in the RFC uh interface. Okay. So as you can see, the create icon is fade out. So the reason why it's fade out is even though I have the authorization to check in into the uh the, the system with the SM tonight, there are some other things I'm still lacking. So I won't be able to carry it out. But let me explain before I use in the right, I use my right uh, account. Okay. So here are some uh Connections that have been that has been created. So we have varieties of connection that has been done. Yeah. So since you are going, so since you are, are going for a new uh connection, okay, and we know that SAP makes use of ABAP. Okay, so. Definitely, we are going to create. So since I'm lacking it, so I will log in with the right account. Okay, so please can you, so can you spot the difference? So, so can you spot the difference? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. sir. So, so the create icon is active now. Yes. Okay. So even though you have the right transaction to carry out uh iOS connection, you still need more to use it. Okay. So since we are working with ABAP, SAP language. Understand, uh, SAP only understand the ABAP language. Okay, so this is ABAP for connection. Like I said, I've shown you the other uh, you, uh, the connection created. Okay, so back here. So to create a new connection, you click on create. Okay, we are in. So since we are in, R is the destination. So I'm I'm trying to connect from uh from Q92 to Q90. Okay, so uh the R destination will be. Um, P, P ninety two. P ninety two. No, P ninety two because um because I'm doing the connection from from P ninety two to yes to Q ninety. So to make it very easy for the for the admin face it or for you yourself for for the for, for the user to understand what he's doing in case he's being asked for questioning. Okay, so the P ninety two stands for. So this is, means I'm doing the connection from P ninety two to. To to clients to sorry to to Q ninety I think this is wrong. Okay, so let me just put P ninety two. C L N C. P ninety two. C L. Q ninety. Okay. And the connection type, you can search for it. Okay, we are making use of ABAP, connection to ABAP system. Okay, so the description will be for RFC to Q90 client. You need to you need to know. The clients you are connecting to. 
So I'm going to client 243. Okay, you need to know the client you're connected to. I'm going to know the username and the password of the client you are trying to connect to. So to KMIT, you can decide to hide as much as description you want to do. Okay. So definitely, once we're done with this, you can either tap enter the system or click save. So if you tap, if you click on the uh, enter key on, on, on the keyboard, it's still going to show the same thing, okay? So again, you, you still need to know the target host. You need to know the target, target host, okay? So uh, I, I RSL target source is 192.168.88.231, okay? And the most important thing is the instance number. So in the process, maybe I don't have to input the wrong instance number, definitely I'm out. So so the instance number for P the instance number for P92 is 00. zero. There's a time that it used to be zero two at the time it changed. So change it back to zero zero, then we assign the other and the uh, instant number to the other system. So once you are done, to be sure if the uh target source is correct is correct. Enter. So it's correct. Okay, so if I there is no I think is not correct, I'm going to definitely get an error message uh beneath the screen. Okay, so it's correct. You can see I server does work the office. So it shows that what I'm doing what I'm doing is correct. Okay. Then I move to login and security. So the login and security is where you provide the information. Of the other system you are connecting to. Okay, so so the client I'm connecting to is this two four three two four three. So the username I'm connecting to in two four three um. Is just hold on. So, so after all the right parameters are in field and you're sure of the information, upon what you've done, you click on the connection test. Yeah. 
So we're going to test to P92 client Q90 successful. So automatically I've carried out my RFC connection. So now if I'm if I'm in any system, I can have access to my own to this particular client, P92. And if I'm in P92, I can have access and I want to get any information from Q90, I can't do that. So that's how to carry out uh, an RFC connection. So if you have, uh, just hold on. So if you have any question, okay, just hold on. Let, let me check if there's more questions. Oh, Mr. Abiola, I'm, I'm sorry if I talk too fast. So sorry about that. I just have to check. It's fine. Okay. So if there's any way, if if I have any question, you can uh, drop so I can go back. If you want me to go back to the system, so let me know. Apologies for that. No, sir. Um, so are you telling me now if... um. I need to order to Mr. Biola now on the RFC. He has to, is that going to be a ticket that is going to be raised for me to have, you know, his password and the username on, you know, on a particular client, which I need to, to uh, log into for the RFC. So uh, what's okay, what's the process? What's the process even before before, 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 before my... your RFC? Okay, for, for, first thing is uh, in every organization there's there's a rule and there's a process. Okay, so there definitely will be an order maybe from the HR, maybe from the uh, from the, uh, 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 the maybe upper upper manager, someone superior. Okay, there, there may be there may be a need for you to get that information from Mr. Biola, like you said. Okay, definitely, it's going to come with a message. Maybe a mail will be sent, sent to you. Please reach out to so, so a person. ticket is going to be raised for, for yeah, me. To, yeah, to yes, this. so before you can have it. So, so since, since, you are, since, since you are the system admin, you are the one adding the system, definitely once you see such ticket, then you know what to do. Okay, and, 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 most, and, most, and most times, most times, even though a user is being created, the system admin still have access to, to the client. Hope you know. Yes. Yes. Okay, so 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 a system admin, even though even though you 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 allocate a special client to a user as an admin, you still need to have access to that particular client in case maybe 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 maybe, maybe the user has forgotten his password and you need to help reset the password or maybe there are some things he needs to do and you need to do it yourself or you need to figure out some things about what he or she is doing the system as an admin. There's a way to go about it, which is not something I can disclose. Okay. Okay, sir. So that right. means by carrying out uh, any RFC job is strictly for the business admin person. But, yeah, uh, no, 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 not only the business admin. Okay, the, like I said, there's 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 stages when it comes to user. When a user when a user really comes into a to an SMB system, it's straight to the environment. Okay, and it's a it's a gradual process. There will be a time, maybe maybe maybe, maybe there will be there will be, there will be a time by he, he or she needs to carry out some transaction. It will reach out to the admin. I want to carry out a, a, a transaction linking uh one system to the other. Maybe 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 you have a maybe maybe you have a client in uh in uh Q90 and you have another client in uh in uh P92 and you need to link those particular clients together on your for your own sake. Because if, if for, for example if you have like you have a client in P91, you definitely have a client in Q90. Okay. So, okay. so since since you have since, since you have since you have a uh, client in both systems, definitely you can have you can link it up yourself. You okay. can link the P90 to Q90. Since you know you have since you know you have your and password and the client assigned to you is meant for only you alone. So any configurations you are doing in two systems belongs to you. No one is going to overwrite what you've done. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. So uh sorry, Mr. Emmanuel. Uh just another quick one. So uh for me to do that. The the two systems I need to uh my system and the other system has to be on the same 
gateway address, right? If uh, for, for I think for now, a gateway is not involved in this. You can say I didn't. Yeah, because gateway. no, because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to limit it to the IP address. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah yes. I don't want to limit okay, it to yes. the IP if, address. If, so if, I don't yes, want, want to like. If, if you want to involve the gateway, yes, you can. Okay. Okay. You can. Okay. okay. And and and, and you know, like the gateway, you need to be sure of your instance number. Hope you know. Gateway will work with instance number. Hope you know. Yeah. Do you do you know? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, sir. Fine. Because um, that is that is where how to locate the instance. Even yes, sir. To the gateway. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. sir. All right, sir. Yes, Mister Shishon, the, the the recording is on. No, oh, I mean it's, it's a question. Hello, I'm with you, Mister Anthony. Okay, yeah, the, 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 is it Mister Anthony? Yeah, Mr. Okay, yeah, Mister Emmanuel. Okay, Mister Emmanuel. Yeah, once the uh, RFC connection is being created, is is it a bidirectional access? Can you jump from the the P ninety two to Q ninety and backwards? Okay, like 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 you moving in and out of the system. Yeah, like from P92, you jump to Q90 to, you know, query data, and you can also log into Q90 and query data from P92. Yes, you can. Okay, good. I hope Mr. Biola can hear me. I said I'm, I apologize for maybe if I'm being so fast. Because if you, if you want me to, to go back um, to the No, case, I, I, I... I, I can hear you. But, Thank you, sir. Um, um, sequel to what the last guy said. Okay, sir. Um, so once the um RFP is created, yes, sir. It's it's by that directional, right? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. Okay, so it's by that the direction. If I create an RFP from one system to uh, from A to B. I can connect from B to A, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You you welcome. You welcome, sir. Please, if you have a question, you can drop it so it can be attended to. Mr. Shina, please are you with me? Uh, one, one more question. One more question. Okay, sir. The, um, in in terms of logging and auditing, right? Okay, is, sir. Is RFC automatically logged? You know, or do you have to do an additional uh, step to have that connection, the data, uh, T codes, and everything that you're doing, uh, being being logged? Okay, if, if 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 I can understand what you said, okay, fine. During the during the auditing, right? So is if if you want to check, is it if you want to check exactly what the user uh has done with the RFC connection? Is that what you're trying yes. to ask me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's why I said the, uh, the, the, the the auditor has the right transaction to get all these things in check. Okay. So immediately the auditor is around to carry out those things. The system admin so will have assigned the right transaction code to the auditor to get those things checked. So as an auditor, definitely there are, there are, there are right transactions for you to enter right transaction code for you to be able to carry out what you are there to do. I think I explained this on my, uh, during Mr. Oshena's class when Mr. Jason asked a question. I don't know if uh, I'm making any sense. Mr. Jason, can, are you, can you remember? Yeah. yeah. Sir? I said, the last time you had the question about how uh, an auditor works, so when I was saying something about the, uh, the system admin being uh being available when it is around assign the right transaction for him to carry out the check. Oh yes, oh yes, uh, yes. Uh, 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 all right, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, um, Mister Kamal, sir? um, is it? I mean, what T code do we need for system auditing? System auditing. Yes. Uh, or, uh, okay, how much? Or what are the steps to carry out the system audit? I think I explained that. Okay, well, it's it's it's, it's not it's not an issue. Okay, uh, uh, as 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 a, as an audit. Okay, if if you want to carry out, the first thing is you have to plan. Okay, you plan yourself for what you are going there to do. Everything needs to be in plan. 
Okay. So so once you so once you plan so once you plan yourself, okay, like I said, the admin needs to be available to give you the right transaction. And as, as an auditor, you need to start moving from, from starting from, from the user activity. Okay, the user activities, then you put some authorization checks, field attempts, transaction, tra transaction logs, all those things. That's what uh, that, that, that that's part of an audit uh auditor's uh, job when it comes to auditing uh, uh, uh for your company. I think I sent like that the last time. Uh, yes, I I I I I know you said said, said, said that. Okay. But there there's this, there should be a step, like um I mean I mean can you take us through the, that step or may, maybe in another class, how to go go I mean take take us practically through the, that step. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, our auditor works in the system. Yes. Or or how to audit a system. Uh, what we need to okay, audit okay, oh, okay, okay. What you need to audit a system? Yeah, I mean, if we can have the practical examples of, of I mean, pra okay, a, a practical oh. session. Session. Okay, I understand yeah. you, sir. Okay, okay. I, th I think that will be the next class. It's fine. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. And and uh, maybe if I can add add to that one, okay, I don't so. want to be Oliver Twist. Maybe we yeah. can also do a little bit of tracing okay. with that, you know, SM20 that you're going to do for auditing. Maybe we can add that to that class also, you know. Okay, okay, it's fine, sir. Noted. Yeah. Okay. Noted. All right, thank, thank you, sir. So so, so it's, it's more like you, you guys giving me an assignment. Okay, you, you too, you can go and read more on it, okay? So when you come on the class, there's going to be an interactive section. Though I'm still going to show you what you guys requested for, but at least for, for it to be more, more, more interactive. Mr. Emmanuel, you can go online as well. You can go do yeah. some research about how it works. Mr. Jason, as well, you can do the same thing. Mr. Uh, Abiola, you can, you, can do, you can do the same thing as well. So, uh, right. Can you come again, sir? Come again, sir. Okay, then, next. Mr. Emmanuel said, yeah, it would like us to add uh a bit of tracing like system tracing okay am i correct mr manuel yes 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 that's the okay, okay okay so okay a bit about uh system tracing so we can so i'm just saying you can we can all go go and make our little researches about it. so by the time we are here the next class we can just you know lie together then make it an interactive section i like that as well so i thank mr Bio, i thank mr Biola for the assignments and i'm mr Manuel as well thank you for giving me an assignment thank you <laughs> Um, um, just, just to add to that for me, okay, sir. Um, okay, sir. um, is to Mr. Kamal, I think, um, okay, sir. Mr. Kamal, um, sir? can I have a client, a okay. client, because you told me that you would give me some, a, a, a client that can have multi codes, you know, okay. so can I have a client, another client added to my, um, landscape? Uh, like I said, like I like I said, uh, each we we've assigned a user to a special client. You have special client, okay? If you um, notice, no, I, okay, I, okay, okay. You're I, talking about okay. You're talking about additional transaction codes. Yeah, yes, a, a, additional transaction code or another client added to my um login page. Oh, okay. So okay. So you mean I should assign a new fresh client aside from the client I've given to you? Yes, uh, exactly. We 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 are, we are all entitled to just one client this time, Manuel. Uh, Mr. Uh, Abiola, we are only entitled to one client. So I've assigned the client to you, so you can do all you like with that particular client. But you can have you can have as many users as you can as you can in that uh, particular yeah, client. But given but, to you. but but how do I practice the RFC if I only have one client? You can use your client. That's why I say you can use your client. Okay. When 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 it's time when, when it's time for me to to give you access to the Q ninety, definitely I would. I no no. I mean like I I I think RFC is is be between two, two, between two, 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 two different systems. Exactly. Yeah. So and I I have just one. So how do I practice using RFC if I only have just one system? Okay, so, I need okay, okay I, I think I understand what Mr. Pillai is. It's okay, fine. I'll get it done. I understand you now. It's fine. Okay. I'll get it done. All right. Thank you Very so much. much.
please, if you have more questions, the floor okay, is Okay, so, so what, Mr. Uh, is that Mr. Bella, what he's trying to say is like, um, like, uh, you only have access to like P92 now. You don't have access yes, to P92. Yes, and to you that, want to, to do your system. RFC, right? Okay. Y yes, and that if he wants okay. to do the RFC, there's no way he can do it until, yeah. until he has on that client. Yes, I understand. Mr. Abila, yes. I'll get it on. Thank you, sir. Okay. So that, that means going to go for all of us. We need to have authorization or access to. <laughs> yeah, right. that's for all of us. Okay, I've heard. I'll discuss that with the management. It's fine. Thank you. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you, uh, Ms. Abiola, for asking that question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kamel, we are here for you today. It's fine, sir. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at your service, sir. No, it shows that Mr. Kamal is a good teacher. Is because I mean we 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 can follow him and we know what we, what we want. That's what you're ah, asking that's for. that's thank, thank my you, Mr. Kamal, Mr. Niji. <laughs> I just prepare for them anytime. Mr. Viola, Mr. Emmanuel, uh, Mr. Darasimi, prepare thank for you. those two. I beg, we bombard them seriously. <laughs> we have so we have so many gifs to extract from them. Please. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. I really, I really thank, appreciate thank it. Thank you, you I, so I, much. I, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Miss Adepimpe, I, 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 I saw your message. Thank you, ma. I'm, 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 it's a privilege. Thank you so much, ma. Thank you so much. So uh, to our assignment, do you have uh, any challenges? Maybe with something we, need, we all need to learn from. So maybe we can just all contribute to the solution. Well, for me, I've not, I've not continued where I stop. I'm still, I'm still, you know, reading from the beginning again so that I can, I can meet up. Oh, okay, okay, sir. It's fine, yes, sir. Take, take your time, sir. Step at your time. So uh, I, uh, I think I saw uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Um. Mr. Olaguji, you're welcome. Okay. So you're welcome to this platform. Mr. Darasimi, are you with me? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Kamal. I'm with okay. you. All right. So, Mr. Darasimi. Yeah, so, I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. So, uh, so uh, uh, how is it going with your assignments? Open no challenges. Oh, it's, it's actually going quite well. All right. All right. No right. issues. All right, that, that's fantastic. And uh, so I, I give regards to, 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 my, to my bosses, Mr. Willie Habiha, uh, Mr. Anthony, good day to you. Mr. Willie Habiha, if you can hear me, my regards, good day to you. Yeah, uh, yeah, how are you doing, Mr. Kamal? All right, Mr. Anthony. Yeah, I'm fine, I'm, I'm okay. So does it mean that uh, we are all doing fine with our assignments and we are doing well? So there's no uh, challenges so far for now. Um, um, I, um, I may need help with um with uh setting up that my GRC system so that I can access the end of UBC. You know. Okay. Okay, Mr. Manuel. Okay. Okay. Uh, no question. So I would like to appreciate us all for taking our uh, amazing time to come in class today. So, and I hope to see more of this in our next session. Okay. Thank you for your time. See you in my next class. Have a nice day. Cheers.